New Testament reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, continuing on where we started last week. We read the first half of the chapter, today the second half, and then leading us into next week, a reflection on that famous 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Listen as I read now from God's Word according to St. Paul, page 933 of your two Bible, if you'd like to follow along. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the ear, would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and deeds of power, and gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. And I will show you a more excellent way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, once again, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name as the body of Christ in this place. Help us to learn our part within it and to function together in unity in this place. And may now the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. We are the body of Christ. If you've been around the church at all over the years, you've heard that expression before, haven't you? It's found several places in Scripture, but this passage from 1 Corinthians is perhaps the most developed use of the metaphor of the church as the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul, as we talked about in our confirmation class this morning, right, right is a very skillful writer. The earliest writings of the New Testament are Paul's letters. And he's using a metaphor here that everyone can relate to, to make his point. He's building on what we looked, on, looked at last week, the conviction that all of our gifts come from God, and that everyone has a gift. There are many gifts from God to use in the church. And now Paul wants to go another step further to explain how all these gifts are important. Body as a metaphor is something we can all relate to, isn't it? We all have one. We all have a body. And we all know what it is like when one small part of it is hurting. It's amazing how a tiny part of your body, like your little toe, becomes the most important part of the body after you stub it on that chair in the kitchen, right? Who can remember the last time you did that? You forget you have a little toe until that happens, right? And then it's like your toe is saying, 
That's what you get for ignoring me. <laughs> Next time, be more careful. But if you think you and I can relate to this body metaphor, just think of Paul's original audience in the ancient world. You and I can take Tylenol to stop that little toe from hurting. We can silence almost any aches and pains. But in the ancient world, just imagine the pain people had to deal with from time to time in all parts of the body. For example, a toothache. You and I can run to the dentist, but what would they do? Paul got their attention by saying the body has many parts, and they are all important. And they could all, and you and I, can relate to that. The body is only one of many metaphors that Scripture uses to try to describe the church. We're called the family of God, and sometimes referred to as a building. And yet again, as a kingdom, the kingdom of God. But the body metaphor is particularly important and effective in describing the, the church of Jesus Christ. When we come to the Lord's table together, we say, as this bread is the body of Christ for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Theologically, it illustrates the continuing incarnation of Christ. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, that body has not disappeared from the earth. It is here in you and me. We are the incarnation. We are the continuing of the Word made flesh. There are many ways to use this image of being the body of Christ, but Paul has a very particular use in this chapter in mind. We've already noted that everyone could relate to talking about the body because everyone has one. But it was also a familiar teaching tool in the ancient world. One commentary noted, and I quote, the body image was employed in other ancient writings as a reminder to those of low social and or political status of their place in society, namely in a position of subservience to those of higher standing. End of quote. In other words, the body image was used to reinforce the societal structure. Everyone had their place in the ancient world. Kings and royalty were the hand of the soldier was the strong arm, farmers the belly, peasants the legs, and slaves the feet, to be walked upon to support the rest of the body. Paul takes this familiar image and turns it on its head as he applies it to the body of Christ. In this metaphor, the body has many parts, and some are less honorable than others, and everyone could relate to that. You and I see this as a clever rhetorical device to make his point with paradox and irony. But to the ancient reader, this was a radical, even a revolutionary reinterpretation. In the body of Christ, in the church, even the most insignificant person has value. In fact, in fact Paul is saying, paradoxically, they have the most value. Some interpreters suggest that this emphasis on the weakest and most vulnerable among us as being the most significant is because they best reflect the humility and the vulnerability of Christ. We read in Philippians chapter 2 of how Christ took on the form of a human being and even that of a slave in order to suffer with us all the indignities of humanity. What does this metaphor have to say to you and me here today at PCMK? We live in a democracy, do we not? Last week we heard about our founding document that says all men and women are created equal. We don't have that hierarchical view of society, or do we? It's human nature to think some people are inherently more worthy than others. We talked last week about how much we pay athletes compared to school teachers. We can all use this reminder that everyone is important in the body of Christ. Every person and every person's gift is important. I think there are other insights that we can draw from this text today. So in the 45 minutes that I have left, you check your watches. I suggest we summarize what this passage has to say in three ways. The health of the body depends upon each part functioning well. And that, too, 
changes in the body are scary, but inevitable. And three, in the body, each part has a purpose. First, the body, the health of the body depends on each part, each part functioning well. Our culture is obsessed with the body, how it looks and how it functions. We're obsessed with health, aren't we? If you watch any television or read any magazine, you're bombarded with medications that we can take for everything. And then this time of year, the fitness centers, I think, spend their entire advertising budget in the month of January. They offer specials to get people to join because they want to burn off those extra pounds they took on over the holidays. I just think of it as hunkering down for the winter and the extra pounds will keep me warm and they'll come off again in the spring, I hope. We're obsessed with health, which can actually help us understand this body metaphor. Because you see, the whole body can only be healthy if all the parts are functioning well. So not only do we need the eyes to see and the ears to hear, we need the pancreas to produce insulin and the liver to clean the blood. So we need to do all we can to continue the metaphor to make sure that the whole body is healthy. We need to reach out to any member in our midst who is hurting. And then also, unfortunately, part of being healthy is exercise. I say unfortunately because I don't like to exercise. But good health depends on it, right? So we need to find ways for every member to use their gift. Everyone needs to exercise his or her gift. That's part of what it means to be a healthy body. The second thing we want to note about the body is that changes in the body are scary but inevitable. When you go to the doctor, like Brian, he or she is interested when things change. If you've lost a lot of weight recently, that may not always be a good thing. Or if you've gained a lot of weight, well, that usually is not a good thing either. The same in the church. Significant and especially rapid change can cause a lot of anxiety. If a church loses a lot of members, that obviously is a cause for concern. But even adding a lot of new members can cause some anxiety because it represents change. There's a great scene from the old movie, A Man Called Peter. Anyone remember that movie from a long time ago? It was about the life of Peter Marshall, who was the pastor of New York Avenue Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C., and he was a chaplain of the United States Senate. But when he first came to the church, he was young and dynamic, and lots of young people were coming to the church to hear him preach. One day, some longtime members of the church were looking out the window, watching all these strangers coming into their church. And rather than be excited about the growth, one of them commented, Don't these people have their own churches to go to? Fortunately, we don't have that attitude here. We welcome new members, young and old alike. We love these new people and we welcome them. But change is never easy. There's a tendency for every living organism to want to stay the same. It's called homeostasis. We don't want to change. But whether we want to or not, change is coming. Our world is changing. Our community is changing. We're all getting older. Our kids are growing up. Part of what it means to be a healthy body is to be able to adapt to change. I try not to bring too many changes uh, to the way we do things here at PCMK in my first year, but just by being a new pastor, I'm a change agent. And so far, I'm impressed, not with myself, but with all of you and your ability to adapt to change. This is a healthy body because I see openness to change and to the new things that God may want to do through us. And finally, this body metaphor makes it clear that every part of the body has a purpose. It's not that the church has to find diversity. The church is diversity. We are all different. We all have different gifts. And that is the way that God intended. Each of us is here for a reason. You may not think you have much to offer, but you do. And the body can't function without every member doing its part. Worship here at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning is a good example of how the body functions. 
There are the obvious and visible roles of musicians and pastors. But just think how many other people have a part in making worship happen. Custodians clean the sanctuary. Someone makes sure the sound system is turned on and working. Someone else is running the camera up there. And by the way, do you know we have our own YouTube channel now? It's PCMKNY. Go check it out. And that reminds me, we need to have computer-savvy people who can post YouTube and audio to the Internet and update our website. We need ushers to greet you and help you find a place to worship. We need the flower team to prepare beautiful arrangements like this this morning. We need office staff to prepare and run off the bulletin for You get the idea. Like Paul said, some parts of the body get all the attention, but the behind-the-scenes parts of the body are just as important and maybe more so. I've already handed out to you, thanks to our new members, that, oh, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. In a few minutes, you're going to receive a copy of the annual report for 2012. As you read those reports, you'll get a sense of all that goes into making this body function so smoothly. Every ministry is important. Every person is important. Every part of the body has a purpose. You have a purpose. We need you. Today, we welcome new members into our midst, and in their new member packets was the form that they just handed out to you, where we asked them to tell us about their gifts and where they might want to get involved, where their interests may lie. And it may have been quite a while since some of you have thought about your gifts and what you would like to do, what's your purpose in being here. So since you have one in front of you now, I'm going to stop talking just for a moment. Scary thought. We're going to have a little silence right here in worship. Let you look at that form, and if you got a pen, you can fill something out. And then through the rest of the service, and as we go through the annual meeting, if you want to jot some things down, check off a few boxes, you can drop that form off in the basket on the way out of worship this morning. I'll just pause for a moment, and you can reflect carefully on your gifts and your interests. This is the time of year when our president will be bringing the State of the Union address. So on this, the day of our annual meeting, I would share with you the state of the body of Christ. The health of the body of Christ here at PCMK is good. But to get even healthier, we need to get some exercise. We need to adapt to change. And we need to get everyone to use the gift that God has given us. Let us do so in the year of our Lord, 2013. Amen. Amen. 